right, I'm Steve Vigorant, uh, sort of a punk rocker, but more of a sort of grumpy old git now, but that's no problem. And apart from writing uh, and making music, I like to do a little bit of artwork, I suppose you'd call it. Um, I don't consider myself an artist in the sense of like being a painter or, you know, like, um, I don't know, Turner or something like that. It's just things, I find it, um, just sometimes I see something and I'm like, oh, I'll do something with it. So, for example, um, this was an old bit of wood that I found um, washed up on the River Thames down at a place called Rainham in Essex. And um, it's got this, it had this old blue paint on it, so I just decided um, I'll, I'll sort of do the classic pike. Because um, every house used to have apparently a stuffed pike in a tank. So I thought this is a way of doing it without, um, uh, without hurting the fish. Um, so yeah that was that just a crappy old bit of wood and people seem to like it it's, it's done with um watercolors uh pencils felt pens whatever i could find and that's the way i tend to work um with, with uh, my artworks um another one um is uh, the green man because i've always been into um that sort of thing i've always liked celtic and um uh, medieval stuff and just like, I just like the idea of the green man. And this is made from paper mache, and um, it, it's this is solid paper mache. Uh, I'd found a way of, uh, rather than cutting uh, paper into strips and then painting the paper with the with the wallpaper paste and sticking it onto a plasticine to make a mould, I found a way of, if you just rip up loads of newspapers, put it in a, a bucket of wallpaper paste, you end up with, and you swill it around, you end up this mush and you can manipulate it into shapes and you just leave it to dry um, and then you just paint it and there you go, you've got a, it's a very simple way of any, any old newspapers, it's just a way of using old newspapers, anything and if you've got old felt pens just put them on there and varnish it and you'll get a really nice little effect it doesn't matter how you know how uh, infantile or whatever or, or uh, uh, you know what's it called uh, I can't think of the word like dick now it's one of those um, you know care home moments in it um, but yeah you know give it a go um, another one that I really like is this which is an old breeze block that was in my garden and uh, I had an old bread knife so I started cutting into it because it's very soft breeze block and um, and this came out <laughs> and it's literally all these lines are made with a, a, a rusty old screwdriver and I had a, a one rusty old chisel which I used um, and it's just a breeze block just give it a go it's very soft you can cut it with a saw as I say if you've got an old bread knife if you've got an old bit of breeze block just give it a go just scrape off the scrape off this smooth surface and you'll get this nice grainy thing don't matter how childish or if you think it looks rubbish, don't worry about that. Someone will come out and say, oh, that's really good, can you make me one? And that's a pain in the ass. But it's very simple to do. And if you put it in your garden, all these little holes, they'll gradually fill up with um, green and moss and lichen and things, and it'll look really nice. Or there's a spray paint you can buy in the shops now, which is makes it look like that anyway. But yeah, it's just an old breeze block. Just give it a go. All you need is a an old screwdriver, um, an old bread knife, or if you've got a tenon saw, a tenon saw, just give it a go. Um, and the last one is a bit more involved. This is when I was really into wood carving. This is Mother Earth. And it's made from false acacia, which is a log of wood. You can see how big the log was. You know, it was just a little branch. Um, and I just started. A false acacia is it's quite a soft wood, but it's very close grained. So when you're going into it, 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 it's, um, it holds, it's, it doesn't splinter or anything like that. And what I found myself doing was that I wanted to make a very Celtic uh, um, shape. And this figure at the bottom originally was going to be her riding um, uh, a, a donkey. Um, but then it didn't look too good, so I changed it into a man. So really, really it's, uh, I suppose it's Mother Earth sitting on the shoulders of man, because without Mother Earth we can't do anything. So that's... Um, Give it a go, you know, it's it's very simple. Um, it took me about two days to make that, um, rubbing it down. So, you know, that's my artwork. Just look around, see what you can find. But again, I mean, the one I would, if you've never done artwork before, the one I'd definitely go for 
this breeze block because once you start chipping away at it, you'll realise how easy it is. Bits will fall off, don't worry about that, but don't worry about it, just give it a go. It's really, everyone's got breeze block in their garden, and what do you do with it? Just do a simple face, don't have to be as, as good as this, or just do your initial. Okay, the reason I, I love doing it is because I think it's, um, um, I've met too many people who, people always took the mickey out of me because one of my favourite paintings um, or bits of art is um, uh, Derby Day by William Powell Frith and it's been on so many chocolate boxes and, and things like that that it's become a bit sort of cliche to like it but I just love it. I think it's a brilliant bit of artwork and the other one is Peter Bruegel's Hunters in the Snow and that's been on so many Christmas cards you wouldn't believe it but there's something about those two paintings and I don't care if people say well you don't know anything about art I don't care if I don't I just think they're very beautiful things and I want to look at them and enjoy them not to have to think about it um, <clears throat> so I think when I get into doing my artwork what I love doing about it is that I try and keep it very simple so if someone comes along to see it they think oh I could do that and yes you could anybody can do it um, I used to, I made my own uh, characters for the Punch and Judy show I used to do and I knew that they would never be as good as other people's. You can buy them, you know, you can get people to make them for you, but the tradition of Punch and Judy is that you make them yourselves. Don't matter how crude they are, as long as you've done it yourself, that's the thing. It's an achievement you've made. And if you're thinking of doing a puppet show, let's face it, you can have two paper bags on your hands with faces drawn on them and you can make them talk and people will watch. So, it, and all I'm trying to stress here is that you don't have to be an artist to be able to make artwork. You can just get any old bit of stuff, splash a bit of paint on it or whatever, or felt pens, and there's your artwork. And, that's, and, and it's open to everybody. Anybody could do it. Nobody tells you what you must or mustn't do, or they shouldn't do. Just go for it. Give it a go.